hear me talking, it's because it is so windy I had to just cut the voice out and put some, some sound to this. I wanted to look at this little bank of serpentine and show you all the different things that we can discover in one little spot. There's this awesome mineral spring coming out of the mountain for ages beyond ages. Lots of minerals. But look at... Look at the layers. So this is actually brachia, meaning broken up pieces that are being reconglomerated together by the different minerals in this. But the minerals were blowing my mind because it's flowed out obviously for for eons here and it's just layers of, of it. That's what it is. It's water that's so rich in minerals that every time it pulls up or slows down it's made a little layer. So just this usually occurs inside of cavities in mountains and stuff and I think would be considered more of a tufa or stalagmite type of growth. So there's what? Uh, salacious and cal calciferous. Um, so limestones and stuff made out of the little microorganisms are calciferous and then um, the cherts and different things that are made out of the silicate are from the siliceous oozes which accumulate on the bottom of the ocean and then water precipitates through all of that, runs down and forms new mineral layers that we know as different types of stones. I'm talking fast because it's blowing wind out here. I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to get. But these are layer after layer after layer. If you can imagine something like salt or sugar rich which are also crystal-like growth you can always think back to like pooling out and then evaporating out leaving a little crust or if you have hard water mineral rich water like I do and you see the little white crust that forms around your stuff and blocks up your stuff that's this but the little layers here are beautiful I think we'll take just a couple little pieces and look at them a little bit closer but yeah, look at it. It is, uh, it's translucent in some spots. It's tilted on its edge. Let's see if you're getting the details on that. Oh, so this whole thing, this is a good example. Look at the, the layering here on this. And it's been eroded away again by water, but you can see the different solutions which made slightly different layers. You know, because as the water's flowing, it's a slightly different mix of the minerals dissolved into it. And then when it forms a layer, it creates that slightly different look. But look at that. That's, a, that's pretty cool stuff right there. Those are water lines, like in agates, like growth lines. And the top of it. Here's a good shot. There's a fine, fine little layers to it. Looks like an oyster shell or any sort of seashell where it builds up in thin layers. Same process. Growth. You can hear that behind me. That is the wind in the few remaining pine trees. As we come around here you see that those layers become the same broken off layers that we get in a lot of a lot of calcites and this entire creek bed is this it's, yeah look how, look how thick the layers are I mean they go all the way up that's just moss and lichen but those are 
huge thick layers of the stuff. And then all the way down here. All the way down here. More and more and more of it. Yeah, I can walk you down. Oh, look at these. Some of these are just deep and rich and beautiful. That's how many layers are here, probably going all the way up this mountain. And these don't look so great, but that's just because they've been exposed for a while and they have lichens feeding on them and stuff. But yeah, very, very agate-like stuff there. It goes into swirls. And whirls. Lots of goodness in there. All the way down. You see that this is layer after layer after layer. Here, all the way up here. There's just more layers of it. These are, these are slabs of the stuff. They're just a little... These and we'll go ahead and take them home and give them a slice and see what they look like because... Yeah, holy moly! The edge there. See that we're actually standing on a hundred foot deep ledge of the stuff. the flow in the layer. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. But I think that this is kind of a cool spot because it's it's flowed down and exposed a lot of it. Yeah, the rocks that broke off and have been solidified back into it. I'd call those a, a real recent break, yeah. You know? Compared to some. It's a cave. God. Okay, well I think that that is all that this is going to be and then we'll go back and slice a couple just to look at them. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay, so I'll see you back at the shop.
As you'll see me going through these rocks, I want you to understand that I don't have a particular form in mind. For me, the point where I would want to confidently craft some of this stone is still far off at this point. I've discovered it, I have identified it as close as I can. And for me, now, this is where the studying comes into play. I've worked with wood my whole life, so I understand how it's going to split, or I at least have a good guess. I know if I'm working cross-grain or with the grain, and a lot of that can cross-transfer that knowledge, I can cross-reference into rock. But every time I cut a rock, I discover something new, I learn something new. Every slice through it, every push that breaks it, allows me to, to discover something new about it. So, as I go through the process, you can see me sanding here, just learning what grit it takes to get the polish on it, how hard the stone is, uh, which directions on the grain to cut to reveal what kind of patterning. There's so much to learn and that's one of the great parts about crafts is that that's how you learn, it's hands on, that's why I chose construction that's why I chose to do things with my hands is because I learn better doing than memorizing and you know that's two different ways of learning so some people enjoy and have the aptitude for gathering knowledge from books others need to to do it hands-on that's more how I am personally and the more that I touch something the more that I encounter it and learn it, the more that I work with it, the better at it I become. So, starting with a curve of zero on this stone, I'm just trying to open it up. Um, one of the main reasons I cut stones on this channel is just for a better look inside, just as a rock collector trying to understand which minerals are inside of it in each single one of these stones that we're looking at rainwater has dissolved calcite in layers of limestone and that has run down through the ground come up in the spring and then been laid down in ultra thin low layers to dry out each time one over the other laminating and over laminating and and creating layer after layer and the different colors the different things that we see in it are other minerals that are present in there other imperfections that are causing the different variations probably the very thicknesses that you're seeing are like rings in a tree or anything that grows So as I was cutting the stones, each one is just a raw piece of material to me, especially from this side as a lot of them were already pre-broken or crumbled off pieces, so it isn't obvious to my eye at this point looking at each piece what's going to be inside. So that's half of the learning is just cutting into it the first time getting a better window, obviously making your best guess before you make the cut. You can see the outside, what it looked like, and that's after scrubbing and cleaning. So some of them are obvious, but then I wanted to know what it looks like cut on a diagonal. And 
you know, oftentimes like with wood, it's a way to extend the color in between each of the layers. And you can see that showing up here. So a lot of these pieces are just trying to determine what the stone can handle, how sharp of an edge, how steep of a slope, just like if you were building a pyramid. I've learned now that cutting a pyramid is the same. There's, you know, rules that you're going to learn for every stone that you're working with literally how high you can stack it before it will crumble, but also how steep you can cut it before it becomes so fragile that it's, it's just impractical to have it like that because it instantly breaks apart. Um, you make things too thin, they become too fragile, so you have to learn the strength of, of each stone. So if you see me just cutting slabs, if you see me just cutting random pieces, it's half random and it's half learning the art, learning the craft. With these particular triangle pieces, I'd started to aim for making more specimens to leave on my shelf. So a couple of these I am actually going to put into my interior case. For that reason, I like leaving the natural top and bottom on these. I think it's a good learning tool because now we have a very clear look inside the stone and then also by leaving some outside natural rind or surface or weathered look to it then you have something to reference for more what it would look like when you're encountering it in the wild or in its natural situation. This little piece, when I saw it, it reminds me of the falls in Turkey that are an iconic travertine waterfall system. They're in other places too, I believe in Greece and anywhere where it's a highly volcanic area and then you have ocean sedimentary rocks mixing together and springs happening, you can get travertine. It's also travertine, depending on which book you're looking in, is referred to as a tufa, which you would know as something that grows in cave systems. It's the same process of limestone being dissolved and then just running down to somewhere else and reforming into another stone as it, as it dries out. So stalactites and stalagmites being of the same sort of process in creation building up of layers and layers. What we're looking at here I believe is just a, another layer of pure calcite. This one particularly thick I would hypothesize from either having physical room or more water flow. Somehow or other, these crystals grew larger in this stripe than the other thin stripes that we're seeing present in the other rocks that we've gathered. These are only polished down about halfway to where you would if you had a definite form chosen. 
mostly just again trying to expose as many looks and windows inside of a specimen as I can while making it somehow semi-aesthetic and then I keep in mind leaving a little bit of the natural behind so that it can be used as an ID card and then also a little bit to how it's going to sit on the shelf if I was going to keep it on the shelf because until I have a better specimen or I've made a more crafted or pretty stone then this is probably going to be my example that I keep for personal reference of, of what travertine looks like. I like the triangle shape for rock specimens or towers. It seems like a really uh, powerful way to keep a stone. So. I am overall trying to learn how to get the angles right on stones, how to make my degrees steeper, what each stone can handle as far as steepness and thinness before it fractures out. Um, like on this particular rock, you can see that I ended up with all the grains coming together in a pretty spectacular way by accident on one focal point. So thereafter I would probably try and emulate that as many times as possible playing on two angles coming together. Things like that that you discover as you go along that are kind of priceless by accident and then after that you're going to repeat it and repeat it. You can see how just in one piece you would almost need to do a little window cut into it if you could afford the material to understand what your best side was, what your best face was, where the deepest fractures are. These have all just been hand sanded pretty lightly with some 220 sandpaper and then had a light wiping down of mineral oil to go ahead and wet them like licking a stone or a wet stone always makes it look uh, in deeper, deeper colors. This, I think, is just another very crystalline specimen of the same stuff that came from the exact same crumbled up pile of material that was breaking out of the creek. Just more, more water flow, perhaps, more of everything that allowed this one to grow thicker, more translucent crystals. Shows you the possibility of materials in one one little ten foot area though.
If you like this adventure, if you like this little explore, consider giving me a thumbs up. It lets other people, me, and YouTube know that you like the video and it can definitely help promote and support the channel and if you haven't subscribed already please consider hitting the subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it so that you don't miss out on any of the announcements of the videos when we put them out many adventures coming lots planned for the quest in the immediate future um, be sure to stay tuned and I will see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other when you get the chance, and keep questing for details. Mm -hmm.